here because you've either been to Visceral or you uh, haven't been to Visceral and want to come and see how we sort of end. What we decided to do here is actually create this situation that we all share now and that's at least discuss it and, 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 and engage with trying to figure out what we're going to do. You might all decide, hey, let's just throw them to the bin, let's just bleach them and, and not even think about it and go and grab the next big steak that we can find in, the, in, the, in O'Neill's. Uh, or we might say, actually, we want to figure out a way in which we, we at least pay some kind of, uh, of uh, consideration, pay homage to, to those life forms uh, in a way which would be appropriate. Thinking first about death and the human concept of death and the uh, emotions that human brings to, bring to killing and how it can, a human being can justify killing certain things at certain times. And I like the language the farmer uses when the cow is leaving to be killed. He never says the cow is leaving to be killed, he says they're, they're going to the factory or something like that. Although it's interesting he said it's going to the factory, which is part of this thing that I mentioned before, where life is becoming a raw material, becoming instrumentalised. So in a sense the cow is becoming an instrument or become instrumentalised to such an effect that it's going to a factory. They've used up their purpose, so now it's their time to die. And I think those are actually difficult questions. And mm. it's back yeah. to the issue of human control and our mm. self-centeredness in assuming that it's all a material for us to use. What do you want to do? Is anyone, does anyone have any suggestions? Yeah, I'm not a scientist, but I kind of wondered, are we going to, you know, what are, what are we going to do them? Are we expected to adopt one each? Or? <laughs> I mean, these cells are essentially on a really elaborate life support system, and if that wasn't there, they would die anyway. When you're working on the tissue cultures, I developed a kind of a bond with them because you're a carer, you're looking after them. If you contaminated them, you you weren't a very good caretaker. When it comes to an end, you kind of want to be there for their end and not just have in your head that, oh, I don't know what happened to those, you know. I, I must admit that I don't, I'm not sure what's appropriate. I've done those killing rituals quite often, but I'm still in two minds in regard to the fact that, as we mentioned, as you mentioned, this idea that, you know, this morning when I was brushing my teeth, I killed, I killed so many life forms and spread them out into the sink and didn't even think about it. This is the canonical DNA fingerprint. You've probably seen it uh, in every TV show uh, dealing with crime, uh, police work. I'm going to spend about the next 10 minutes being absolutely quiet. And I'm going to do that because otherwise I will make a mistake. Basically what I did was I squirted pre-processed DNA into this gelatin and I'm going to make some kind of images from that. This is an interesting phrase, I think. DNA analysis can now be, rightly be called DNA fingerprinting, for the term invokes in the mind of a jury that we are identifying one individual to the exclusion of all others. I found it very interesting, enlightening, and I've enjoyed it, if that's the right word to use. And I think this is, a, for me, would be a once-off event, and it has been an extraordinary event.